The Couple Next Door, written by Peg Lynch and starring Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce. May I have the other part of the paper, dear? Oh, yeah, sure, you can have the whole thing. Oh, golly, it's a nice, cool evening, isn't it? Why do we sit in the house? Let's go out in the yard. No, there's too many mosquitoes. Oh, I see the second installment of Charlie's article on the history of the towns in tonight. Did you read it? Oh, yeah. Miss <laughs> Leon, I just can't get over Charlie Bemis. Of all people sitting down writing something. Oh, honey, now why do you look like that? Every time I say something about Charlie writing, you always oh, get funny Oh, I don't know. Look. I guess it's because it makes me so mad at myself. You know, I can certainly write just as well, better than any Charlie Bemis, who has had no experience. You know, I wrote things all through... High school and college? It just makes me mad. I never kept it up. Instead of being a writer, I turned into an ordinary businessman. Well, honey, you could still write. Good heavens, doctors and teachers and housewives, everybody's writing books these days, even if they have other jobs or professions. Yeah, well, I suppose everybody thinks they can write if they had the time. Well, the ones who write are the ones who take the time. Yeah, yeah, I know. You I do know. so much talking about it off and on, how you wish you'd sit down and write something. You have so many ideas. Well, there's only one way to write, darling, and that's to sit down and do it. You are right, you're right, I know. Well, as I said, I, I thought... You know, when we moved into our new house and I got my own den where I have peace and quiet, and I can really concentrate. Then, you know, maybe I can get into kind of a schedule. Well, honey, the children are in bed asleep now. I can go upstairs. You can have peace and quiet right now. I know, darling. I know. It's just that I... Well, I, I don't happen to have any particular ideas right now. You have to have something to write about. Well, I think the best thing to do is to sit down and write something. Anything. Even if it isn't any good, at least you'll get into the swing of really writing. Yeah, yeah, something mm -hmm. like that. And it would do you good to have a hobby like that. Hobby? Look, if I write something for Pete's sake, I intend to sell it. Well, I mean, try to sell it at any oh, rate. Oh, sure, of course, of course. Maybe I will sit down tonight and try to work out something. I don't know whether I should write in longhand, though, or use a typewriter. Well, either way, dear, I don't think it matters. Oh, yeah, it does matter. I mean, you got to know what's the best way for you. Writers have to find out by trial and error which way works best for them. In fact, you know, some writers even use a dictating machine. Well, I don't think you should rush out and buy a dictating machine. It would be a lot less expensive to try it with paper and pencil first, Well, dear. I know, I know, I know. I, I just You sit down it. at the desk and get out some paper. I'll sharpen a bunch of pencils. Then I'll go upstairs and leave you alone, dear, with your inspirations. Cannon thundered and rockets flared over the barricades in the Battle of New Orleans, and Andrew Jackson won a great victory for the United States. There was only one thing askew with that victory. A month before, United States and British envoys in Europe had signed a treaty ending the war. 2,000 men died at New Orleans because they didn't know their countries were at peace. That, of course, was in 1815 when news traveled by sailing ship. Today, if a shot is fired in the Middle East, Lowell Thomas has the whole story for you at dinner time. If a conference is held in Europe, a CBS News correspondent tells you of its highlights on the World News Roundup within hours. Next time you listen to CBS News dynamic coverage, give a thought to what a privileged generation we are to have the excitement of shortwave on-the-spot reports on the World News Roundup with our breakfast coffee, the clear, incisive reporting of Lowell Thomas in the evenings. So start this week to hear the World News Roundup and Lowell Thomas regularly. Both programs are heard Monday through Friday on CBS Radio over most of these same stations. Well, for heaven's sakes, where have you been? Oh, hi. Thought you were down here writing away, and I was so quiet upstairs, so I wouldn't bother you. Came down to get a cold drink of water, and you're not even here. Oh, well, I, uh, I ran out of cigarettes, so I went down to the drugstore. Oh, well. How much did you get done for? You went for cigarettes, honey. Huh? Well, I, I'm doing all right. I'm just trying to get started. Pete's sake, you act as though you expected me to sit down and turn out a masterpiece in half an hour. Darling, I don't expect any such thing. Really, honey, you know, you can be awful discouraging. Discouraging? It seems to me I've done nothing but encourage you. Now, believe me, if there's one thing a writer hates, it's to be asked how much he's got done. Oh, I mean, well, I'm sorry. When I'm I get sorry. something written that's halfway decent, I'll, I'll read it to oh, you. Oh, fine, dear. Why are you so irritable, honey? Well, I don't know. I can't exactly get the idea I want to write about. Oh, uh-huh. Oh, goodness, I begin to see what the wives of writers go through. Imagine having a man underfoot all day. You're trying to get your housework done, and your husband is wandering around, unshaved, most likely. And he's desperate because he can't get an idea. Oh, you can always oh. get ideas. The problem is to get a good idea. Yes, yes, I suppose that's it. You know, I think I'll be able to work a lot better when we get into the new house. You know, I've been thinking about my den, the way I'll have it. To begin with, 
I think I ought to have a rather special desk, you know, with a lot of built-in things. Mm, uh, no, I don't know. You know what I mean? No, I don't exactly. Well, I, I well, I don't either. But I got a general idea. See, then I thought I'll uh, I'll have these bookcases on three sides of the room. Three sides? Why we haven't that many books, dear? Well, well, we will have. That's it. I think I think we ought to sit down and start making out a list. Matter of fact, I I did write down a few here. Here, um, Oliver Twist, David Copperfield, Huckleberry Finn. You know, classics like that. Um, then, as they get older, I gets older. The children. Our children. Oh. And naturally, we'll buy books for an older age. You know, they'll get into Boswell's Life of Johnson and Shakespearean plays. What is all this, dear? What, what are you talking about? We're going to form a library, a good library of our own. Do you realize how few of the real classics we own? Well, yes, I know. We but haven't I mean, even got a decent collection of Shakespeare. Well, we have one that has Macbeth and Hamlet, all the better known ones. I don't think it's essential we have... Coriolanus, or some of those that are hardly even done now, anyhow. I mean, you need are... things like that for reference. That's what I think we should build up, a, a darn good reference library. What for? The children. Do you realize that in this new house we're going to be on the outskirts of the city limits? We're quite a good ways from the downtown public library? Well, the high school will have a library, dear. Can't the children do their reference work during study period or after school well, or something? Well, that's all very well, but what if, what if they don't get it done? I mean, as I recall, I spent considerable time in the library at night, rushing down after dinner. Of course, it was just four blocks away then. I sat there until nine o'clock when it closed, getting stuff out of the encyclopedia and mm -hmm. looking things up. Well, it'll be some time before even Betsy is in high school, and your son, dear, is only three weeks old. It'll be some time before he's looking things up in an encyclopedia. You know? Darling, of course, but we got to look ahead. Now, if we start planning now and buying really good books gradually... Well, maybe so, but the way towns are growing these days, in 15 years, what is country now will all be grown up. Probably be a branch library right across the road from us. <laughs> I don't know why you're so hard to talk to sometimes. Well, I don't quite see what uh, what all this has to do, darling. Well, no, all right, listen, William. I'm trying to explain. An another thing, another thing we'll have to have is a dictionary. We have two dictionaries now, both of them excellent. I'm sorry, go on. I was referring to a large dictionary that you find in libraries. You mean that enormous thing the size of a suitcase that sits on a stand? That enormous thing, Why, yes. Why, that terribly expensive. Why, that's All right, can you think of a better go... investment for two growing children than an absolutely accurate dictionary? Go on. I see you've made quite a list there. All right, we'll mm -hmm. need reference books, which will be absolutely essential to me if I'm going to do any writing. Mm, I see, such as? such as Bartlett's Quotations, Roger's Thesaurus, that book by Bergen Evans, you know, Dictionary of Contemporary American Usage. Then there's another good reference book, uh, The American Thesaurus of Slang. Oh, golly, there are dozens, literally dozens of excellent reference books that a writer needs. Uh-huh. Seems to me I saw an ad the other day for a series of great books or something. It includes, oh, you know, Plato, Aristotle, Spinoza, Newton, Darwin. Boy, you know, we don't have anything like that. Golly, I was looking over our books, and I was shocked. I was really shocked to see what we've got or what we don't have. I, you know, you'd think we were a couple of ignoramuses. What do you suppose people think when they look at our bookshelves right here? Huh? Huh? Well, uh, that isn't the idea anyhow, is it, dear? You don't buy books to impress the people who are going to look at the bookshelves. You sound like Myra. She said to me one day after she redecorated her living room, I've got to buy more red-covered books, she said. More red books to bring out the red in the draperies. Well... That is not what I meant at all. I'm only trying to point out to you that now, as the children grow up, we've got to acquire a decent library. We might even gradually acquire some first editions. You know, they're as good as money in the bank. Have something really fine to leave them when we die. Something they'll be proud to have, you know, a real collection. Well, I was talking to somebody the other day who said he used to live next door to an auction place in Philadelphia. And he said it made him sick to see all those so-called collections of things that people had spent a lifetime lovingly collecting to leave their children. He said they no sooner died than the children trotted them down to be auctioned off. I'm sorry, go on. You are the greatest one for changing the subject. Anyhow, <laughs> my den is going to have built-in files. Maybe eventually I'll get a tape recorder, perhaps even a dictating machine. But I'll have them concealed, so although I can use it as a real writing room and home office, it can also really be a cozy den. <laughs> what do you think? I think that most writers generally sit down and write first and make the money to buy all these things. They don't usually start out with such elegance, do they? Oh, oh, and a globe. I want a large globe of the world that lights up, be wonderful for the children. I've got only one thing to say to you, dear. If you're going to write, sit down and write. Well, for Pete's sake, you stand there talking to me. I, I'm I can't going write. back upstairs at once. I won't bother you, and if you want me to keep on encouraging you, then you write something, even if it's only a paragraph, before you go to bed. Yes, ma'am. We'll return to the couple next door in just a moment. Sorry, I 
just couldn't think of anything to write about. <laughs> well, stop worrying. Now get to bed, dear. The very fact that you at least spent some time thinking what to write about is one step forward. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you know, it's kind of stimulating, too. It really is. Sure. And darling, if I was kind of irritable, I'm sorry. Oh. You really have encouraged me a lot. I do appreciate it, darling. <laughs> Thank you. If you're looking for your pajamas, they're in the bathroom hanging behind the door, dear. Oh, yeah, all right. Oh, I called Mother. Told her I was getting back into my writing again. Boy, was she tickled. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, bless her heart. Cause like all mothers, she thinks I, I could be another Shakespeare if I just try. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Well, it's hard for a mother to be objective, I guess. Well, I don't know it's so crazy. Mother's got a pretty good sense of what's good and what isn't. She never praised me for anything if she didn't think it was good. Well, I didn't mean she did, dear. Well, anyhow, I told her if I wrote a book, I'd dedicate it to her. I said that she was the first one who ever felt that I had an... What's the matter? D dedicate the book to your mother? Yeah. Oh, honey, look, it would mean so much to her. Good night. Now, don't be that way, will you? Look, I haven't even written a book yet. I'll dedicate the second book to you. How's that? Did I say a thing? I don't care. Not at all. Dedicate it to whomever you wish. I mean, far be it from me, dear, to try and persuade you. Oh, After golly. all, I do feel that I, I suppose have all writers you. go through this. I certainly do. <laughs> Couple Next Door is written by Peg Lynch and stars Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce and is produced by Walter Hart. This is Stuart Metz, inviting you to listen again tomorrow for The Couple Next Door.